I lost close friends, more than one, uh, and particularly Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix. I would pass away at the same. It was it was shattering. I mean, like one after the other. I was like, wow, what's going on here? And I knew that I had to write a song about that, and uh, I was doing some research. Somebody told me that it's an astrological event that. Um, it's Saturn's return. As Saturn uh, goes retrograde around the planet that way, that it affects a lot of people that are um, approaching 30. And it ties into the fact that um, um, uh, Jesus died, what, when he was 31 or something like that? So you've got, you've got that, if a, you know, if the greatest man that ever walked the planet died in, in the early 30s, and you're coming up to that period in, in your life. And also, you, it's the time when you realize that you're not a teenager anymore. That sticker, teenager, is taken off the picture. You're now an adult, and you gotta be, you know, you gotta stand up and be counted. Sure. Well, for me, I got away with that, I mean, because I was in rock and roll, so. It, that passed me by. I, I can't remember my middle age at all. You know, it's just like I was a teenager and then suddenly I was 60. <laughs> so, but it, you know, I think one of the reasons maybe why I um, survived that period was is I was so into helping Henrix at that point in time. I knew he was in trouble. I could see it. He wasn't listening to anybody by that time. He was like being worshipped, you know, and he, he could do no wrong, and uh, so it was hopeless talking to him, and I just, I just watched the whole thing unfold, you know, I mean, I was up close and personal on that one. When I met Chuck Berry on the road, I was on, on the road with Chuck, and I knew that he had a reputation for being a real bad guy, you know, and he was so nice to me, man, it was unbelievable, he took me out to dinner one day. And we're sitting there outside on the porch, you know, I think it was in Sacramento, California, and we're, we're eating, you know, and he said to me, uh, listen, man, he said, uh, keep your main money wide in your sock and keep a, just a couple of dollars in your pocket, in your wallet. And he said, and don't let booze and drugs tempt you like you did me, you know. And I was like, Oh, it's really nice of you, man. With kind words, you know. Of course, I didn't take any notice whatsoever. <laughs> just, that's the way you are when you're a wild and free tenant, you know. We were on the Chuck Berry tour, and we were really fortunate enough to get chosen for the support band. And um, I realized that every other band were, were playing Chuck Berry related songs on a Chuck Berry tour. I'm like, this is crazy. I mean, I have to admit that Chuck was responsible for a great uh, part of um, of the British uh, bands, you know, the, uh, even, you know, the Stones, the Beatles, everybody, Chuck Berry. I wanted to do something really different, something that would stand out, you know. So I was thinking blues, you know, I was thinking blues, and then uh, I knew that there were, I knew one and a half verses to uh, House the Rising Sun, because I'd seen it and heard it by folk artists in my hometown. And then um, I was shopping for records one day and I saw Bob Dylan. You know. And I realized that Bob had either been in touch with somebody or he'd, he'd done his research. And there was a lot more of a story to it than I ever knew existed. Another element that was around at the time was Jimmy Smith's music to walk on the wild side. I convinced Alan Price that, that he should copy the Jimmy Smith movement and make that the solo. So the song is going down, 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 cut out the, the organ solo to make the, the song, you know, acceptable length for radio. So Alan was really a little uh, cheesed at that. Mikhail Gorbachev's down the road in a bar 
and um, he was interested in meeting musicians. So, yeah, let's go, you know. A few minutes later, I'm sitting next to Mikel, Gorby, and I'm noticing how well he's dressed and the watch that he's got on and everything, you know. He was a fine, a fine gentleman. And a lot of guys were like throwing questions and answers at him and all that kind of stuff. And I'm sitting there thinking, what can I ask him that would be good for him and good for me? Something that I don't know about, you know. And I said, so um, what do you think is going to be the next worldwide crush on the planet? You know, what's going to like, what's going to be danger zone? And uh, he said, water. So a couple of the guys said, wow, that's really interesting. Can we help you? you know, can we hook into your office in Germany and um, get things going? Well, that was a great idea and I, I wish we could have done that, but it didn't happen. So um, I thought, well, the only way to really make up for that is to record a song. Just in this album, I wanted to try and reach deeper and, and, and on a personal level than I've ever been before. And I'm surrounded where I used to live in the desert. I'm surrounded by Jesus freaks, self-admitted, on bumper stickers, on cars. I'm a Jesus freak, you know. Jesus is on your side and all that kind of stuff. And yet there's so much evil going on as well, you know, at the same time. So I'm thinking, well, you can't have one without the other, you know. How would you know? what the Jesus spirit is if you didn't have the devil breathing over your shoulder. When I looked at the screenplay, I understood why they didn't use John Lee hookers. Because John Lee's version is like, boom, 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 boom. And the animals is boom, 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 boom. You know, it's a little fast punky thing. And it, it fit the, uh, the scene better than, than uh, the original recording by John Mayuga. And, uh, but I like the line from, from uh, I think it was from the Bond character, he says, oh, everybody's gonna make a big entrance. I was rubbing shoulders a lot with Sean Connery back in the day. And I remember walking to a, um, a nightclub that we all frequented and uh, I had a girl on each arm. I thought his insights uh, to my situation when I was with the animals were really amazing. And so I could see what he's saying, you know. I mean, I, I've, I felt the same way, uh, you know, about Chuck Berry and uh, Howlin' Wolf and people like that, you know. I mean, uh, they, were all, they were all so ins inspirational to us. And I was fortunate enough to, um, to meet most of those heroes, the, the black guys from that period. I was, I was fortunate enough to meet them and 